What is going on ICBA fans? My name is Frosty aka The Alpha Like a Rock and welcome to week two of the ICBA. So last week we got very lucky. We won in a nice little fashion there. So if you missed that battle, please go back and check that out. Uh, it was a good battle against Chiangi77 and his Brisbane Heat Trans, but this week we have uh, a very tough road over these next couple of weeks as we start off our tough, I think, four week schedule uh, against six foot hacks leo himself mr ucl season two champion so with that we need all the luck we can get and our shiny rock rough is there to cheer us on as always so uh here we go let's get into the team and this is the team i decided to bring for him as he has a very 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 good team that i was not prepared for and did not bring up i don't know why but i should have brought it up I should have had it ready, but I didn't because I'm a failure to the Pokemon world. Yes, a failure to the Pokemon world. And this thing takes forever to load. I am not going to lie, this thing takes forever to load. But he does have a very good team as his team actually uh, does not uh, matches up very well against mine. So uh, for his Esmon, for his tier Esmon, I know he chose Darkrai right off the bat, so he has a very good course. So his team consists of Darkrai, Mew, Thunderous T, Needle Queen, Conkelder, Togekiss, Bronzong, Haxorus, Virizion, Pukamuku, and Kangas Khan. Uh, his users are Mew, Thunderous Theron, and Pukamuku. So a uh, little weird with the Pukamuku pick, but uh, Mew can, I believe, use the Munium Z. So I do believe he is allowed to use that. I don't know for certain on that, but I would. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I would definitely. Uh, I definitely believe it is allowed. So, uh, so it is a definite possibility that he brings a Z Mon this week. Uh, Z Pukamuku, not quite sure exactly what he wants to do. Maybe Z Memento. I'm not for certain on that. So I do need to be careful of that. Uh, so I also need to be aware of the Pukamuku Pass set. Uh, you know, Calm Minds and curses and just passing all that stuff so i definitely need to be careful when i when i bring that uh that he doesn't bring that so uh definitely scary threats as dark rye uh is very fast and is the fastest thing on his team and is faster than everything on my team that is not meloetta in pirouette form so pirouette form meloetta is faster but only after that so i i would have to take a hit and it does not take a hit so i'd have to get it into pirouette before this thing comes in so uh, other than that, uh, Thunderous T, very good option. Needle Queen rips right through my team, and I know that. Uh, Conkelder is also very damaging, and Bronzong is very wally, so I do need to be careful. Also, Haxorus is a big problem as well. Could be a big problem depending on if it's a Double Dance set. Could be Dragon Dance, uh, Dragon Dance Sword Dance, or Agility Sword Dance. Uh, could be anything right there. So with that, let us get into the team, and let's bring up the team that we are bringing for him today starting with Toph our Lander Theron. now this is a Yachi Berry rock polish set uh it has 252 and it's an adamant nature uh um I have just enough speed to where with this I can outspeed scarfed full timid thunderous T um so other than that uh it has some HP investments and it has uh full 252 into attack uh, and it is a adamant nature. It is rocking the moves uh, knockoff, earthquake, and stone edge. Stone edge is the only thing I, I would be able to hit the thunderous with that it can one shot that thunderous after a rock polish. So I needed to make sure I had a move for that thunderous uh, as knockoff without a plus two boots does not kill him or without rocks damage. So if he is at full health, I will not kill him. It does not KO. So I needed stone edge as a stone edge would KO. Uh, most sets that is not a Babaro uh, Berry or whatever it's called, the Rock Berry. So, uh, with that, we're going to go into our next mom, which is our uh, Alt. Why did I space on this name? Altair. There we go. Our Altair. Uh, which is our Star Raptor. It's the first time we're bringing it uh, this season, and he is. This is a Choice Scarf Reckless set, just a base Choice Scarf Reckless set. Except this is an Adamant Nature, so uh, I will not outspeed half the things, but I will hit like a truck. As uh, Adamant Choice Scarf Brave Birds do good damage to pretty much everything that is not Bronzong. Uh, even U-turns do a good. If it's not the defensive set, U-turns still do decent damage, uh, about 20% to 25. Uh, so and then it's uh it is rocking uh brave bird double edge as those are both recklessly boosted u-turn just to turn and then close combat for uh 
for anything that's close combat. Brave Bird should one shot that Conkelder should he bring it. I do need to be careful of mock punches and I do need to be careful of ice and thunder punch. So those are two big things I definitely need to be careful of. So uh, next from there, we are bringing our Fajita, and this is our Heatran. This is our fully physically defensive Heatran with a little bit of speed investments to make sure we outspeed. Um, trying to remember what it is i believe it's full speed or some speed investments to uh possible um i think it's neato queen i think yeah i think it's just i think it's just enough speed investments to where it speed creeps the the base set but uh i'm not expecting that to be the best thing and I, it's also some of the faster mods that are around the same tier that should be able to outspeed them should he have no speed investments but he's going to be my stealth rocker rocking magma storm ancient power and toxic uh toxic could be used against a possible togekiss but if togekiss does have heal bell then i want to be able to have ancient power as ancient power should hit it for decent damage and also should if i uh, get a plus one boost to everything that would put my opponent in a very bad situation so uh, especially as a fully defensive as i am expecting a um mold breaker earthquake earthquaking haxorus so i do need to definitely be careful of that but magma storm is to basically trap things in especially i want to trap in that bird or i want to trap in something that comes in after it this will also give me a chance to bring it in on top of um on top of bronzong should he bring the bronzong i should be able to bring this in set up stealth rocks for free possibly toxic anything he brings in uh he might have something ready for that you know maybe an earthquake or something it does i do know that bronzong does get earthquake this is why i made it full, full physically defensive uh so this is basically just kind of a physical wall here just a little bit of a physical wall of my stealth rocker so uh not too much there and then also 228 into the hps to get it up to a nice uh hp number from there so next from there we are bringing our seaweed uh i did rename this as i did have a different name for this thing for our degrage so i just named it seaweed as it was a lot easier to name it seaweed than anything else so we are bringing our seaweed for the first time and this is a black sludge adaptability modest set uh with sludge wave draco meteor shadow ball and toxic spikes uh should i be able to get the toxic spikes up if i don't see the needle queen then i should be able to set up toxic spikes to free and they would wear down my opponent's team uh, and do a very good, uh, very good sorts of damage as Draco Meteor. It is adaptability boosted and should do good damage to everything minus Togekiss, but Togekiss is weak to Sludge Wave. Um, so 12 speed for special defense, 60 in the defenses for a little bit of defense boosting, uh, 252 attack, and then 180 in the HPs as to get me a little bit of HPs. This thing can survive. I believe it's in I believe it survives an earthquake or it has a 50-50 shot if rocks are up of surviving earthquakes <coughs> from a needle queen. Mainly because Sheer Force Needle Queen does not get boosted. And if it is life orbed, if it's not life orbed, I'm not expecting him to actually bring life orb. I'm thinking he'll bring black sludge or possibly even scarf. So there's definitely a possibility that he could bring there. And then uh yeah, so we're bringing seaweed for the first time. I'm hoping it puts in good work in this match. So next we are bringing our uh, Hitsune Mika. This is our uh, Meloetta. And this is a little bit of a different Meloetta. As you can see, it's a hasty nature with a lot of attacking moves. As this is a pure fighting type Meloetta. This is a physical Meloetta as this is meant to Relic Song, get into its fighting typing and go off on something as this thing is faster than Darkrai. And once I'm in uh, once I'm in Pirouette form, uh, Darkrai becomes a little bit less threatening because I am able to threaten this thing out. I am rocking the Fighting MZ as a close combat, um, a close combat Fighting MZ all out pummeling should uh, one shot most it will one shot as close combat one shots the dark right but it should be able to pick off a mon that is low and should be able to finish that off uh it is also rocking knockoff and ice punches ice punch is the only move i would be able to hit needle queen with so i'm hoping to relic song on it get into need uh hit needle queen put it to sleep and then get in those nice and powerful ice punches so it will uh plus with that we have serene grace so we will have a 20 percent chance to freeze and a 20 percent chance to sleep which is also good for me uh full 252 into attack 20 into the hps to give me a little bit of an hp boost and then uh 236 as this will allow me to outspeed a fully uh timid slash jolly natured dark rye so um other than that, I will outspeed it. And once I'm in this form, like I said, Dark Rite is less threatening. And I now have the fastest mod on the board. So, and then lastly, we're bringing 
our very powerful Urza Scarlet, uh, bringing our Gardevoir for the first time. This is a Spadef. This is a Spadef, but uh, bold natured, uh, sorry, defense natured um, Gardevoir. So it has a little bit of uh, defense investments. It has about 40 into defenses plus a defense nature is to get me up to about 100 as I am able to eat a little bit of the physical hits, but this also gives me a lot of special a lot of special bulk is I am able to uh, basically take life orb dark pulses from uh, dark right and basically allow it to kill itself while wishing and protecting and allowing my leftovers as uh, dark right will not be able to hit me too horribly hard unless it has sludge wave uh, I do know that dark right does get sludge wave but sludge wave does about 60 to 70 so I should be able to scout for that using protect and definitely using my my Urza to scout around figure out the sets uh, so it has wish protect moon blast and um, healing wish I thought about putting a psychic move on it for the needle queen but the problem with that is is that if he brings dark right i literally get walled by dark right and i don't want that so i brought moon blast because i can still hit needle queen i can and then i can i can just about one shot the dark right from where it's at from just about half health so i wanted to make sure that this thing had a lot of hp investment so i fully gave it a lot of hp as it will have 175 and we'll be able to wish pass at least 85 i believe is it 85 about 80 I have about 87, about 87, 88 HPs uh, into Wish Passing, which is very good, especially if I need to get something in uh, for one more attack or something like that. So that is it. And Urza is a beast and also is rocking the traceability. Should I be able to trace sheer forces? Moonblast will then hit much, much harder. So uh, so that is the team. As you guys can see, we have Toph, Altair, Fajita, Seaweed, Hitsune Mika, and Urza Scarlet. I do know that this team pretty much loses to... Uh, uh, to earth and poison span uh, to earth psychic and poison so I need to definitely play very well in this match and we will see how it goes next I will bring up then the match and we will see how we did all right guys we're back and here it is our match with Leoden uh, aka six foot hacks now as you can see from the team builder I did pretty much call a good chunk of his team as I did feel he would bring the dark right and the Mew and the needle queen and at the last minute I did have a good prediction that he would bring that bronze song as well uh Conkelder was kind of a 50 50 shot but I also did think he would bring the hackster as it did match up well um so our, our team like I said, it looks a lot weak to ice and earth, but we should be able to handle it. Should we be able to handle it? Uh, I do need to make sure I handle that Needle Queen. I kind of wish now that I had uh, Zen Headbutt, as Zen Headbutt would have been a very good move to hit most things, especially that Conkelder as well. That would have definitely done good chunks of damage to that Conkelder, um, but it is what it is. So, uh, but as it is, uh, here is our battle and let's start with it. it is going to be a little bit of a long battle so uh i will explain everything as we go so here we go we get challenged by leo and we played the team skull music because we had to definitely rock out the, with the team skull music so so here we go i decided i'm going to lead off with altair because this is my best bet for leading off as i can turn and scout and see what he wants to lead with as he leads out with regal is bronzong after seeing this i am really really positive that he's just going to set up the stealth rock so i'm going to turn out and i'm going to get into my lando because i can then use a knockoff get rid of whatever item he has on him and i will have a good shot at two hit KOing from this point um so i am rocking the yachi berry so i do i am thinking he is rocking hitting power eyes as he sets up a stealth rocks here so i decide on my next turn that I want to set up my rock polishes. I want to be faster than his whole team and put his whole team a little bit on tilt. Uh, so here he gets a little bit of leftovers recovery. And here I just, I'm going to go for the rock polish as just to kind of get it up and get Toph into pretty much being a very, very scary Pokemon. And he does reveal hidden power ice. Uh, and judging from the damage that I take here after eating the berry, I can survive one more very, very easily. So I'm going to be able to take this thing out uh, after using a not after using two knockoffs, but I'm gonna be left as, as really really weak and I will never be able to survive re-entry as I know I'll be probably down to about uh, I believe I get down to about 5% or something like that So as you can see I'm down to about 10% so 27 I know I'll never outlive the rocks But I'm able to get this bronze out of the way as this was a big big problem to get into I guess in hindsight I could have gotten my own rocks up as I could have gone into I could have gone into Fajita. So he goes into Merlin here, and I'm like, okay. Uh, 
let's just go for knockoff. Let's get rid of this item. Let's, I, I know it's going to do damage as he actually reveals the Culver Berry. I did actually, after clicking knockoff, think that he would have the Culver Berry. But that still does a good, clean chunk of damage, even though the Culver Berry was there. So, and he just goes for Ice Moon. He takes this out. So, we're pretty much 1-1 as I lose Toph. And he loses his Bronzong. But for me, getting rid of Bronzong was a big, big deal because I needed it gone. So here I go into Altair. I'm going to take the Rock's damage. And I just decide I know that this thing is not fully physically defensive because of how much damage it took via the Culberberry knockoff. And I'm going to go for Brave Birds. As he decides to switch out, I think he thought I was going to turn here. As, as he probably assumed I was Scarfed or Banded. And um, he brings in Haxorus. And he takes this Brave Bird. Now, this will not kill, but it has a good chance of very severely weakening it. And this is a Reckless Boosted Brave Bird, and it does a huge chunk of damage, around 89%. Uh, but he shows that he has a Rocky Helmet, which does suck, because I take Recoil and Rocky Helmet damage. So I'm uncertain if I'm going to live, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for the Brave Bird Span. I know I'm faster. I don't have to worry about it. And getting Haxorus out of the way was a big, big deal, as I did not want it, as I knew it could easily one-shot my... Um, to calls. So here I take Rocky Helmet damage and I take a little bit of recoil, but I'm left at 10 HP, which is nice as I will get one more Brave Bird out. So he sends out Destino, which is the Dark Rye, and I'm like, oh, good, I can one shot this. So I click Brave Bird, but he actually reveals that he is Scarfed. So this is a Scarfed uh, Destino Dark Rye. So a little bit sucky, a little sucky that I lost Altair, but here I know that he is locked into Dark Pulse and I can go into Urza and I'm going to be completely fine with this as uh, I want to, see, as I'm going to fire off. A, well, first, I'm going to trace his bad dreams. I kind of wish now that I had had a sleeping move, as that would have been really awesome, just to put something to sleep and then use bad dreams against itself. But uh, he goes into Sasha, as I knew he was going to go into the Needle Queen. And I go for the Moonblast, just to kind of scout damage and see what kind of set this thing is going to do. And that does a decent amount of damage. And I noticed that, and I get the special attack drop, which was good, because I was assuming this could be a especially offensive version, and getting a negative one on that was very good. So here I go for protectors. I want to scout the set. I want to scout and see what he does. As he reveals um, Crunch. And now this was a little weird to me. I was like, okay, this is a physical Needle Queen. Which is a good thing that I made a defensive nature and a little bit of investments. But I don't know what's going on with this. So uh, as you see, I'm just going to go and I'm going to go for a wish and kind of sell. And he's going for Crunch. And I'm like, okay, well, does he have the Poison Jab? As I was kind of scouting for the Poison Jab at this point. Because I know I could survive one Poison Jab. Uh, there's no life orb. There's nothing there. Is you know, I see really nothing. As I don't know if it has a life orb yet or not. Um, so I'm gonna go for wish, and I'm gonna wish myself, and then protect back up as I'm scouting. And at this point, I'm about 95% positive that this Sasha is scarfed. That he brought a he brought double scarfers. So I'm I'm looking at it. And I'm like, okay, well he's 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 locked into crunch. I can just keep going with this. And so I just decide I'm gonna wish I, I'm gonna go for another Moonblast. I'm gonna do some more damage. I'm gonna see if I can wish and then protect Moonblast, wish, protect Moonblast, you know, rinse and repeat and get this thing out. And I get a crit there, which is nice because this turns it from a five hit KO into a four hit KO due to that one crit. So So here he withdraws it, which is to me confirming more or less that he's scarfed as he goes into Merlin, his Mew, and I go uh, I believe I go for the wish here. Is this is exactly what I want is I want to wish up and so I decided I'm going to get into um, Meloetta as Meloetta to me is can take anything this thing wants to do including a psychic or you know a shadow ball if he has a shadow ball I can get out I can take I can scout for it as he will be there and I'll be able to get the wish pass in and then I'll be able to go next turn and take a, maybe a little bit of damage but also be able to get my relic song off and get Meloetta up into the powers so as you can see we definitely get her wished right back up as she does take a decent chunk of damage so so here it just reveals that he's actually very heavily speed invested because he is still faster than i am um i mean i understand that she's in like the 90s or she's like a 90s speed but still heavily i'm heavily invested so that showed me that he was heavily invested in speed so here i go for the relic song i do a decent chunk of damage and i actually get to sleep which is very very helpful because this now turns me into a fighting type and against mew that's a very bad that's a very bad thing so here i'm just like okay i need to get rid of this mew i'm gonna go for knockoff if he, if he goes into destino which i don't think he will he'll lose that scarf and that will definitely ensure that i'm faster so uh, so here, I just go for another knockoff. He got sleep. He got slept again, as he will not survive it. And Hitsune Mika, in her first showing, picks up a KO here. 
So uh, that Mew is gone. That's also another very good thing is that is another thing that could have walled uh, our, our mods, especially with Sopo. So here he goes into Chris, the Conk Elder, And here I just decide I'm going to pop off my, my fighting MZ is I need to be able to do a good clean chunk of damage. This never was going to KO it. But I, it, what it would do is this would do a solid amount of damage to put it within range of possible Draco Meteor. As I am assuming that this thing is assault vested, this will do a decent chunk of damage. And so, like I said, I'm pretty heavily invested. If I was uh, adamant natured, I probably would have done, I probably could have picked up the KO if I was adamant natured, but I didn't. So, as he goes for Drain Punch, and he gets most of it back, but we end up surviving on eight, which was good. It was good for us as he gets a good clean jungle damage back, but I at least did a good 50%, you know, 40%, I guess. And he then reveals Mach Punch. So, I thought he might have it as I was going for close combat. It was a chance to KO. But I uh, I just had to scout for that mock punch. So here I just decided to go into Seaweed as I am about to just go in and drop an Adaptability Draco Meteor. There's no reason not to. I need to also scout for the Ice Punch, but I know I have pretty heavily defensively invested. This also shows that he is faster, as I do have a little bit of speed investments. As I was, uh, I did speed creep this to be able to speed creep with no speed investments. But I do drop a Draco, and I do hit it, which is very good for us. Uh, the problem is, is he survives it. Looking at the way it was and how much damage I took, I would never survive another Ice Punch, so I didn't want to risk that. So I make the bold prediction, and I go into Heatran here, predicting him to go for another Ice Punch and to go for the kill. And so I definitely get Heatran in, and take a little bit of Rock's damage, and he does go for the Ice Punch. So I, I definitely played that well. It was a very good call on my part, as I'm, I'm going to be able to get that HP back. And now here, I know I have some investments and I'm naturally faster, but I'm going to just pop off the Magma Storm as if he does switch something and he's going to take a lot of damage. He just mock punches to get to basically put me in a range of another of another thing. I do actually land the Magma Storm, which was nice. I know Magma Storm has a chance to kill, but and Heatran picks up another KO. I could have gone for the um, I guess I could have gone for the Ancient Power, but I just didn't want to take no chances with that. So. So with that, uh, we do get a little bit, and he brings in Destino, as I know that a Dark Pulse is probably coming. I should be able to do it, and I'm going to pop off another Magma Storm, as I should be able to one-trap this in and do a good, clean chunk of damage to it. Uh, it does around six, uh, around 55 to 65%, and by those numbers, that was actually what it did, about 55%. So he has a little bit of HP investments, as what I saw from this. So here I get a little bit here. I know I'm never going to survive it, but I am going to get the Magma Storm little damage boost. Or a little damage over time. Uh, here's where I kind of wish I had this. Uh, I did go for an ancient power here, it's just to kind of get an ancient power, but I knew he was going to go for Dark Pulse. I didn't have anything to switch in, so if I had to let Fakita drop in order to get the clean switch back into our Urza Scarlet. Now, Urza here walls this thing as I know it is locked, it locked into Dark Pulse, and I do, uh, by the calcs, I do take about 30 some odd, uh, about 35 to 40 percent. So I should be able to wish up and I should be able to do it and so i went for moonblast here which was kind of stupid on my part uh but luckily we get flinched um so i should have actually gone for wish on that but i look at it and i'm looking i'm like okay he still has a chance to ko it's a small chance but i'm not taking no chances i'm going to protect i'm going to get the hp recoveries through the leftovers and i'm going to guarantee my survival from this next dark pulse that i get take and i'm going to get another wish off the only way he beats me here is if he flinches me again so uh, here he goes for another dark pulse and I know it's going to hit I just have to pray for no flinches and I get a wish off so I'm like okay good no flinch because if he had flinched me there this match would have been over as he would have just swept me with dark ray at this point because there's no way I would have been able to survive it at this point as uh, seaweed seaweed takes about 50% damage from the dark pulse even with all of his investments and plus he has to take rock damage he was already weakened to begin with so at that point I probably would have just healing wished and then gone for sludge wave so but then I would have lost to uh, Needle Queen in the end. So, uh, so as it is, I do get the wish off. I do, I do wish protect. And here I just go for another wish. This is kind of where it kind of gets a little stally over these next ten turns, ten turns or so, because uh, he's going for Dark Pulses. I am just going for wishes. I am trying to guarantee my HP pool and guarantee that I can do, I can be at a good chunk of HP when that Needle King, Queen comes in. <coughs> so. Uh, here I just go for protect and I'm going to get my HP back and I'm going to be put just about back at full HP. So um, with that, I put myself 
right around the 170, around the 165 mark, or maybe the 162 mark. Okay, so I get about 10 HP for, per the leftovers. So uh, here he goes for the Dark Pulse. I believe I go for the Moonblast here, as he does get the crit, which sucks, as I was like, great. I just took a crit. There's no way I survive a Poison Jab, as I know, no, this is a physical Needle Queen. So here I'm kind of like... I'm like, okay, I, I still think it's scarfed at this point. I'm about, like I said, I was 95% positive that the thing was scarfed. Uh, so I didn't know if he wanted to lock himself into poison or not. So um, so here, he brings in his Sasha. This is his last mon. As I go for protect, as I want to scout and see what move he goes into, what he wants to do there. As he goes for the crunch, I think I, at this point, I'm like, crunch must be the best move, the best option move to try to take out both. Uh, but looking at it, he'll never be able to do anything. He can't get the defense drops because of sheer force. Sheer force doesn't do that, but he can. He does get the bonus damage, and I realize I'm like that does a lot of damage. But I need to be able to wish myself back up and use Urza here to to wall this thing. As I know, wish and protecting, I'll be able to get more HP than he will be able to do damage to me. So, like I said, these uh, these next. Like the next 10 turns or so is basically just me kind of stalling him out trying to get my hp pool back up so that way i can go for moon blasts as i am going to use my time wisely and wish protect myself back up to full hp as i know that he will not be able to do enough damage to ever hit the 50 percent mark unless he crits um so here he goes for a crunch and i believe one of these he actually does get a crit and i think it was this one no there was one of them I could have swore he got a crit with. Uh, he got a crit with one of these crunches. Uh, so here I go for wish. As here I know that I will get enough HP after the protect and leftovers to put myself right back at full HP, which is exactly what I wanted. So here I go for another protect again, and he goes for the crunch. And at this point I am I am about 100% positive that he brought double scarfers, and I'm like, okay, I'm I I've got it. I've got this in the bag. Now that I'm up. I can go for the two moon blasts. I know moon blast will do 21, you know, about 20 to 25 percent, and around the HP pool, I should be able to two shot this thing with a moon blast. And looking at how much damage that did, I guarantee and know that I will be able to KO him from this range. Uh, even if I were to take a crit and he survives, I can healing wish into my into my uh, into my Dragalus, and I will take that chance that he has packing the earthquake, as I will have a 50/50 shot to survive it and kill him. But we don't need to because Sasha, because Urza Scarlet comes through and wins us the match as we take a 2-0 victory over Leo and the Durham Dredigans. Now, this match was a little weird because after the match, Leo messaged me on the side through Discord and said, hey, um, I said, he said, hey, congratulations on the battle. He's like, it sucks that I, the mana I had, the, the Needle Queen I brought was the wrong one. And I went, I was like, okay, what do you mean it was the wrong one? He said it was a Needle Queen that was supposed to be for a different battle, a different battle, you know, a different thing entirely. It wasn't the one that he that he made or the, or the one that he was going to use in the battle. So we ended up getting lucky that he didn't bring the Needle Queen he meant to bring intendedly. As the Needle Queen he, the needle queen he brought me, which uh, the Needle Queen he was going to bring, coming from the message that I had from him. Let me actually bring that up and I'll tell you exactly what the Needle Queen he was going to bring. The Needle Queen he was going to bring was going to be a Jolly Nature uh, mix set with Sucker Punch, Fire Blast, Earthquake, and Poison Jab. With Jolly Nature, Sheer Force. Now, Sheer Force, Poison Jab has a chance to KO Guard of War from full HP, even with all the inv with the investments in the nature. It has a chance, as if I would have survived it, um, I could have Healing Wished into Dragalge from there. So, we basically got lucky that he brought the wrong Needle Queen. So I do feel bad because, you know, it does suck that it's, you know, basically the whole hinging of the battle got left on a mon that should have decimated my team. Uh, Needle Queen, I knew Needle Queen was going to come. I knew it was a problem and I knew it was going to be the biggest issue to have to play around, which is why I didn't bring Psychic because, like I said, I didn't want to get walled by Darkrai. I didn't want to get walled by it. So I brought Moonblast. I felt Moonblast was the better option to bring as I knew I could do damage to it and it was resisted, but I would still be able to do decent damage to it. Um, so it does suck that, uh, it does suck that Leo didn't bring the right one. Uh, I do feel bad. Also getting the sleep on the Mew was very big, uh, as it was a 20% chance to get slept. If it had not been slept, there's a possibility I could have taken a psychic to the dome and I would have lost hits in Amika immediately. Uh, I mean, I could have done good chunks of damage, but I didn't have anything that was faster than that Mew. Um, 
I mean, I could have brought in Heatran and then trapped it with Magma Storm, but it would have been kind of iffy at that point, and then uh, it would have just been kind of toxicing it down and getting it getting it with Magma Storm and all of that. So um, we do, like I said, we do take a 2-0 victory over Leo, but uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a sour victory because just the way that it was. But uh, it was a very good match on our parts. Uh, he brought some very very good sets, uh, especially the Conkelder set. Uh, the Scarf Dark Rye, I just, I got completely scared when I saw the Scarf Dark Rye. <coughs> but, um, so it, it does suck the way that it happened. So I do wish Leo the best of luck. I do wish you best of luck, six foot hacks. And I hope that your season goes well and that, uh, another issue like this doesn't arise again for you. As I do know that you probably should have won, uh, coming Coming along, we actually talked a bit after the match, and if it had come down to it, and he brought the right one, and the plays had happened the same way again, and we came down to where it was Gardevoir versus Needle Queen at full HP. Needle Queen, uh, or at that HP, I could have healing if I knew it had Poison Jab, I would have healing wished into Degrals. Degrals would have came in, uh, would have healed, taken rocks damage, and then it would have been at about 88%. Uh, I think uh, actually it would have been at like 90 some odd percent because I believe Black Sludge would have popped in and uh, would have healed the 6% that I would have taken. Then it comes down to this. Does Earthquake KO? At the point it was at, it was a 50-50 shot after Stealth Rocks. After Black Sludge, possibly could have, uh, I possibly could have given myself better odds to survive, but it basically would have come down to whether, um, whether I hit a Draco or not. So if, if it comes down to it, it's Needle Queen goes for Earthquake. If I survive, I go for Draco. One of two things happens. I either land it and I KO him because at the range it was, it does about 70 to 85%. So I would have KO'd at the range that that Needle Queen was at, guaranteed. Uh, even after uh, after that crit second Moon Blast, I, I put it within range of a Draco Meteor. So I would have, I would have KO'd it. And then it would have come down to basically rolls. It would have been rolls. But uh, it just didn't happen that way. So, like I said, I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoy the battle and go show Leo some love. And like I said, Leo, yeah, I'm sorry about what happened about uh, the Needle Queen thing. Uh, but I do wish you the best of luck. Your team is absolutely scary to have to prep for. I didn't like it, especially because it has such a great matchup against mine. Um, so I do wish you the best of luck. I hope that your next couple of weeks go well for you and you're able to pick up steam and get back into the and get a getting winning streak going again. I do know you won last week. And so, uh, don't let this get you down. Just come back and come back stronger than ever. So I hope you guys enjoyed the battle. If you did, please like comment, subscribe as always. And I will see you next week as we prepare for Merc. Now Merc at the end of this week is two and O as well. And he had a very decisive victory in week two. So we have to definitely prep as a Scolipede has been running rampant and his team is very 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 scary and has a lot of good mons so i definitely need to prep my a off for that so um i will see you guys next week and i hope you guys enjoy and i hope to have a very good battle with merc so also go show leo some love if you haven't subscribed to his channel why why haven't you done it is ucl season two champion why the hell haven't you done it you know so uh have a such a great day, guys, and I will see you in the next video. All right, bye.